Okay, I'm going to try to do this kind of quickly. Um, this is videos about radiometric dating, and it's a topic that we go through every year, and there are always students in my class that have difficulty um, getting the concept. And all it is is a way for scientists to take a look at a fossil or a rock, look at the elements within that fossil or rock, and determine its exact age, or as close as you can get. And they use something called isotopes. And all an isotope is is um, different versions of an element. And it's kind of like different versions of the same model car. So if you take a look, you see, um, you know, all, all four of these are different Mustangs, each of them um, obviously different, different um, years, maybe different engine size, maybe different transmissions, um, w whichever the case. They're um, different, but they're all Ford Mustang. So they're different, but they're kind of the same too. And so we're talking about carbon-14. And a carbon atom has six protons. And if it didn't have six protons, it wouldn't be a carbon. And so it has these six protons inside the nucleus. And it also has six neutrons inside the nucleus. And so that's why they call it carbon-12. Six plus the six. Um, but the carbon-14 has two extra neutrons, hence the number carbon-14. Right? And so they're still carbon atoms, a little bit different, a little bit heavier. And so when we look and we find a fossil, uh, scientists will look inside of that fossil and look for the carbon-14. And, <coughs> and obviously here they don't go into it and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they're not really big like this. But this is just you know the only way we can draw it so that you know you can you can see it um, well enough. And so here are the carbon-14 isotopes, and um, carbon-14 wants to do something called decay, uh, radioactively decay. And so carbon-14 is going to gradually change into something called a nitrogen isotope. It actually changes into a completely different element. <clears throat> and so scientists will take a look at a fossil and look at the the percentage of carbon-14 and the percentage of nitrogen and see how much has remained and how much has changed. And again, they don't go in and count one, two, three, four, five. They look at the percentages. So right here it's about half. And if you actually did count these circles, you would see that there would be 16 white and 16 blue. And so it would be half carbon-14 and half nitrogen. Um, so what scientists do, they look at the percentages and they consider something called a half-life. And a half-life is the time it takes for half of the isotopes uh, the original isotopes to decay into the new isotope. So the time it takes for half of these carbon-14s to change into nitrogen would be one half-life. And the time that it takes precisely would be 5,730 years. So they take a look at this fossil, they calculate um, oh, there's about 50% carbon-14 and 50% nitrogen, um, so half of it's changed, that's one half-life, and so this fossil is 5,730 years old. Um, so, um, in the books and in whatever worksheets I give you, I'm not going to show you something like this, so you don't have to count them. Um, I'll give you something like this, where <coughs> everything's nice and neat, you can clearly see that half of it has changed, half of it has remained. Uh, so 50% is uh, carbon-14, 50% is the nitrogen. And so that was, this would represent one half-life, and it would be 5,730 years old. Um, here's another example. Now, um, again, uh, if, if um, we were to actually be able to see all the atoms, it would be a crazy amount of... Um, atomic particles, uh, 12 grams of, of carbon would actually be this many atoms. Um, so, you know, 6 with 23 zeros behind it. Um, so, that's why we use smaller numbers and, and bigger pictures so that it's easier to understand. Here's an example where we are going through two half-lives. And this is the tricky part of this, where <coughs> it's not half of it changes and then the other half changes. What we have is half of it changes, and then 
the time it takes for half of the remaining um, carbon-14 atoms would be yet another half-life. So we have one half-life and then another half-life. So half of what remained has changed. And that would be a second half-life. And then here, this would be a third half-life. So it would be one half, and then another half-life for what was remaining. And then this is what's left over, and the time that it takes for half of that would also be another 5,730 years. And so it actually, um, it's, it's a steady rate, and there's you know a formula for it. We won't get into the mathematics of it. Uh, um, so let's move on to the chart. And so all scientists really need to do is take a look at the percentage of carbon-14. And so if there's 50% remaining and 50% has changed, it's gone through one half-life. If 25%, here's the example of 25%, if 25% has rem is remaining, 75% has changed, then it has gone through two half-lives. And I'll show that to you again. So you can see that it's one half-life, two half-lives. And then finally, here is a sample of you know three half-lives, and this would be 12.5% um, represented here of carbon-14 remaining, going through one, two, three half-lives, and three times 5,730 would be 17,190 years old, give or take a few. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit for you. Um, <clears throat> if you're still not getting it, um, ask me in class, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.